is Paris Du Imami, and I'm the host of The Road to Success for Your Highly Sensitive Child. This podcast is about empowering parents of highly sensitive children to nurture their child's unique personality trait and create a path to success. Our podcast provides guidance, insights, and support to help you unlock your child's full potential, fostering resilience, confidence, and a bright future. If you're new to my podcast, please go back and listen to episodes one and two because they provide information on high sensitivity that all subsequent episodes will build upon. If you skip these episodes, you won't get as much out of this and all subsequent episodes. Also, uh, this is a continuation of episode three, so please listen to episode three before you start this one. To book a private coaching session with me, please click on the link in my bio or go to www.pod.co slash coach to parents of HSC, all one word. Today's episode is a continuation of episode three on the do's and don'ts around parenting your highly sensitive child and some common misconceptions around high sensitivity. So let's get into it. So the first do is teach emotional regulation. Help your child develop emotional regulation skills as early on as possible, because this will provide them with the tools and strategies to manage their intense emotions. This could be deep breathing exercises or mindfulness techniques. Um, Did you know that teaching your child just to close their eyes for a few minutes is enough to reset them and bring down their intense emotions? Uh, I do this for myself all the time where if I feel overwhelmed in a situation, I just close my eyes. Um, If I'm in a, of course, if I'm in an environment that I'm able to do that, you have to assess that for yourself. But just closing my eyes for a few minutes already relieves a lot of the tension that I hold in my body. I also um, recommend that you teach your child um, some somatic exercises. Somatic exercises are movement-based practices that are designed to enhance your body awareness and also to release physical tension. This is something that I learned uh, in very recent months, I think actually maybe even a a little bit over um, a year actually that I came across um, somatic exercises, but not until um, about two months ago is it that I actually started using them on a regular basis. And this has become my daily practice. It's a 10 minute exercise every single day And this really helps me um, just reset my body. It's like, you know, the reset button on a computer or on your phone. It completely resets my body and gives me this sense of calm and just acceptance. And um, it also helps me. I'm very in tune with my body. And it really helps me even become more in tune with my body what feels good, what doesn't feel good, what are my, what, how does my body let me know that it's a yes? How does my body know that it's a no situation? So my body as a highly sensitive person is extremely smart. It has a lot of knowledge um, to share with me, but it requires me to listen, of course. And if I'm listening, it has a lot to tell me and it's very useful information. So you can help your child learn at a young age um, to listen to their body and be in tune with their body. Um, The other thing that you could do is teach your child how to soothe their nervous system. Uh, They could do this by regulating their vagus nerve. Um, There are many ways that you could regulate your vagus nerve. And one way that really works for me, and you have to just find what works for your child, but what works for me is um, this technique um, that I learned 
by pulling on my ear. And I do one ear at a time, but you can do both ears at the same time. And basically what you do is you pull on your earlobe um, to the point where it's stretched, but it's not hurting you or hurting your child, I should say. And um, until you yawn. If you don't yawn, it doesn't work. So it's really important that you hold your earlobe in the stretched position um, until you yawn. Uh, once you yawn, then you can move to the middle of your ear and pull to the side um, and until you yawn. And then once you yawn, you can move to the upper portion of your ear and pull upwards towards the sky until you yawn. And then you can move to your second, your uh, other ear. This technique has helped me so much. And whenever I feel really overwhelmed, um, again, if I'm in a situation that I can, um, I will use this technique. Another technique that is um, more subtle is by stroking your face. So you can start by, um, on the base of your ear, on your jawline, and you just stroke the base of your face until, you, until you're the middle of your chin on the right side. And then you could do the same thing on the left side. And again, you need to keep stroking until you yawn. Um, once you yawn, if you started with your right, the right side of your face, then you could move to the left side of the face. And then the other thing is water. Water is, uh, HS, you know, the HSC's best friend. Uh, drinking lots of water helps them. Uh, stay hydrated, and it helps with their brain. Um, just making sure that your your uh, your child is very hydrated all the time, and then also water has soothing effects on the body. So um, whether it's you know getting in the habit of taking um, a bath before bedtime, or just like taking a quick shower too, if they don't have time to do a, ba a full bath. But water has a lot of benefits for a highly sensitive child. It has a lot of healing and calming effect. And um, number two is respect your child's need for downtime. So just recognize that it's very important for your child to have downtime because um, they they take in a lot from their environment and there's a lot for them to process. And so they, they may need a lot more downtime um, than non-highly sensitive children. Even uh, keep in mind that even if their experience is pleasant and it's fun, they still need that downtime. So um, you could also gauge that and, and control it yourself. For example, gauge how your, your child is doing with the activity that they're engaged in and um, perhaps stop um, before your child is overstimulated. Um, so then they still need the downtime, but at least they don't get overstimulated. You know, they, they can, they, if, they get over the way you know that their your child is overstimulated is by uh, seeing their emotions. Are they crying a lot? Are they getting angry? Are they getting frustrated? That's those are all signs that your child is overstimulated, especially crying a lot. Um, highly sensitive children um, tend to cry a lot because that's how they release all the negative energy in their body. Um, so was crying is actually uh, a good thing. I remember when I was a child, I was not allowed to, to cry. My dad very much disliked it if he cried and um, he would punish me if I cried. And I learned not to cry. Um, and But that was really bad because I had no way of releasing all this pent up um, stress that I had. Um, or, or overstimulation that I had in my body. So um, please don't punish your child if they're crying um, because that's their way of releasing the stress and the overstimulation. And then number three is validate their feelings. This is really important because 
your highly sensitive child is often feels misunderstood. And so if you validate their feelings and their experiences, it helps them feel understood. It helps them feel seen, heard, um, validated, and understood. And this is very crucial for your highly sensitive child. Um, again, a lot of it has to do with the fact that they notice that they are different than the majority of their friends. And so um, when you validate them and when you um, let them know that it's okay to be highly sensitive, it's okay to feel deeply, it really helps them build a confidence, um, a high confidence level, and it helps with their self-acceptance and self-love which all three go hand in hand, by the way. Number four is set clear boundaries. Um, highly sensitive children really love and thrive in a home environment that has very clear and consistent boundaries. Make sure that you and your partner uh, are in alignment um, with the boundaries so that you don't give mixed signals to your child. Because that's what happened to me as well as a child. My dad would be extremely strict and my mom would be extremely easygoing. And um, so I was really confused, like, what do I need to do? Because uh, I had to be one way with my dad and another way with my mom. And it, it was just really too much for a child to handle. So it's very important that you and your partner, whether that's your spouse or your partner, um, that you are on the same page um, when it comes to setting clear boundaries and consistent boundaries. As highly sensitive children really thrive when they know what is expected of them. And also that gives them the feeling of safety and control as well. Number five is encourage hobbies and interests. So highly sensitive uh, children, um, they are very creative children and they tend to, at a very young age, they tend to show you what their interests are. For example, I had a client whose child was really fascinated by building these uh, cities and communities with Legos. And she could, like her entire room was filled with these, um, these really creative and complex um, buildings and communities that she built out of Legos. It was really fascinating. And she had that skill from a pretty young age. So, and it, you know, she really loved it. So she, as she aged, she still liked it, but it was just getting more and more complex. And then number six is provide choices. As early on as possible, provide choices for your child. For example, if you know that it's cold out and you want them to wear a certain outfit, then give them two choices with the two outfits that you think that would be suitable for them, but let them make that decision of which one they want to wear, because then they feel a sense of choice and control and empowerment, which again, fosters their confidence level. And then number seven is celebrate their achievements. This is super crucial. And, um, this is so important that you even celebrate the the small wins and not just wait for them to do something really big before you give them positive reinforcement, because this will um, boost their self-esteem and confidence. I love the way my brother parents um, his daughter, because I remember when she was little and he still does it to this day, um, he would just praise her for the smallest thing that she was doing. And to my, in, you know, in my mind, I was like, really, I would never think of um, praising a child for something that small. But now that I have this knowledge around high sensitivity, I understand how crucial that was in the development of my niece and how resilient and strong and self-confidence she is and has she has such a huge self-confidence level 
for her age, especially. And it's so amazing to see that. And it makes, it just warms my heart to see that she's so self-confident, um, especially given the fact that I really struggled with that the majority of my life. And only recently have I gained this self-esteem and self-confidence in myself. So that's really important. Um, even if they're small, praise your child and celebrate them. Remember that each child is unique and what works for one may not work for another. So be attuned to your child's individuality and individual needs and adapt your parenting strategies accordingly. Consistent love, understanding, and support are fundamental elements in nurturing a highly sensitive child. To book a private coaching session with me, please click on the link in my bio or go to www.pod.co slash coach to parents of HSC, all one word. So now let's get into some of the don'ts. Don't disregard their need for routine. Highly sensitive children thrive on having routine and being able to predict how their day is going to be. And, you know, just it gives them the feeling of stability. So having a predictable and stable daily schedule is important for your HSC. Number two, don't push them to toughen up. Um, this is the worst thing that you could do for a highly sensitive child is to tell them you need to toughen up. Uh, I got this all throughout my life from everyone. Like so were, you know, colleagues, bosses, um, friends, um, family members, you name it. I was given this feedback and Honestly, I really, really hated this feedback. Um, and when someone would say this, these two words, toughen up, oh, my skin would just crawl. Um, and it's really bad because you're basically saying you are not good enough the way you are and you need to change. So it fosters a feeling of inadequacy which you do not want for your highly sensitive child or any child for that matter, but especially highly sensitive children. And this is important for your boys as well. So I know we're in a society where we expect boys to be tough and resilient. And believe me, highly sensitive children are tough and resilient, but they also feel deeply. So they are sensitive. Um, and this has nothing to do with not being resilient. They are sensitive and so they feel deeply and they take in a lot, they process a lot. So um, that's why you see that they show their emotions. And then don't dis disregard their uh, physical comforts. Um, so if a child is telling you that, you know, it's too loud for them where you are, respect that because they might have a sensitivity around sound, for example. And what, what it has been proven scientifically that highly sensitive children can hear much louder decibel points than a non-sensitive child. So please don't disregard it if they're telling you it's loud for them, respect that and try to comfort them. Maybe carry earplugs with you if you need to, um, but definitely try comfort for them. And this could go with clothing, like uh, scratchy clothing, like wool, for example, or their bedding. It could go for anything that has to do with sensory. Uh, so that's the sense of touch. Um, it could be the sense of smell, the sense of sight, whatever it is that they're um, highly sensitive to please pay attention to that and respect that. And then don't react negatively to their, um, to their overreactions because um, they're reacting the way they do because they are feeling something deeply and processing a lot. So they may have not regulated themselves in time. So this is a sign 
of their nervous system being um, dysregulated. So help them, help them, give them techniques that they could use um, to self-regulate. So let's get into some common misconceptions. Misconception number one is sensitivity is a sign of weakness. This is far from the truth. Most highly sensitive children are extremely resilient children. For example, um, my brother and I went through so much in our childhood from having to move out of Iran um, to go to a foreign country where we didn't speak the language to dealing with a parent that was extremely ill for the majority of our childhood to um, you know, being in a new culture, new setting, new way of life, all at a very young age. So we are both extremely resilient, um, but we are both also extremely sensitive. Um, so definitely high sensitivity does not equal weakness. Misconception number two is Highly sensitive children are overly emotional or fragile. Again, um, they may, highly sensitive children may experience emotions intensely, but this does not mean that they're fragile. They can handle emotions very well. And if you have taught your child to self-regulate and um, have tools that they could be using to self-regulate, then you won't see their intense emotions um, or you won't see them getting overstimulated. So it's all about giving them the tools that they need to thrive in life. And then misconception number three is um, HSPs are shy. This is definitely not true. There are HSPs are, or highly sensitive children that are shy, um, but not all highly sensitive children are shy. Um, as I mentioned in a previous episode, the majority of my childhood, I was told that I was shy and I grew up thinking I'm a shy person, but not until I learned that I'm a highly sensitive person is it that I learned that I'm actually not shy. And I'm quite the opposite of shy. Um, and so definitely it's, it's, it's a misconception uh, that highly sensitive children are shy. So as we close this episode, I want to remind you that you have the power to create a bright and successful future for your highly sensitive child. Embrace their uniqueness, nurture their strengths, and provide them with the love and support they need. Together, we can pave a path to success that aligns with their sensitivity. Thank you for joining us today. And remember, you're not alone on this journey. We'll be here with you for more insights and inspiration in our next episode. Until then, keep believing in your child's potential because they truly are extraordinary. Stay tuned, stay inspired, and stay committed to setting your child up for success in life. To book a private coaching session with me, please click on the link in my bio or go to www.pod.co slash coach to parents of HSC, all one word.